Hey everyone, this is the inaugural video of Not Part of Your Scene, although the channel that I do for comics uh, that's called Chaos in Comics was once called Not Part of Your Scene, but I wanted that, that channel just became more focused on comics, more involved in the, the YouTube comic book community. So I wanted to switch them up. I mean, we'll see if that's a stupid idea or a great idea. Uh, but this is the first video just to get something up, uh, just because I've been lazy with it. So, you know, I, I watch a lot of vinyl and music channels and stuff. And I mean, some of you guys have some really awesome collections and just know a ton more about it. Um, I have a good record player and I buy records nowhere near the, the stuff that uh, some people have. So I'll show vinyl and stuff, but really this is more just my music passion because even today, I'm still listening to the majority of stuff streaming, especially in the car or at the gym. You know, I don't have my, um, I don't have my portable uh, needle and turntable uh, with me anymore. So, you know, much harder to listen to that at the gym. So um, I'm just gonna show you, I, it's gonna run the gamut. There'll be cassettes in here too, but I just don't have any cassettes right now. But uh, this is just what I've been listening to this week. So like over the last week or two. So before I get into actual physical media, um, on streaming, uh, there was a, I'm on one of the Facebook groups I'm on, I think Prague Snob, uh, there's a question about uh, bands with uh, polyrhythms or that have a lot of polyrhythms or, or best polyrhythms. Basically, they said polyrhythms and then a bunch of bands showed up. And um, two bands I haven't listened to in a long time came up on that list and uh, I wanted to make sure that I check them out again. Now, Carnival is one. Uh, Sound Awake is the album. It's the only album I know, so it's the one I went back to. Uh, very, very awesome album. I'm not a huge fan of the vocals. Sometimes that gets me out of what's prog, but um, uh, uh, but this album is uh, just really grabs me, really pulls me in, and uh, and I don't even know anything about music, but I could still hear that there's something going on uh, with the. Uh, uh, with the rhythm section and it's just something real interesting that you can listen to over and over and over and over again The other band that grabbed me out of there and then this one's a little bit more on the metal side You know math rock math core math metal whatever you want to call it uh, that I don't think they've gotten enough credit um, I I like Dillinger escape plan a lot better This is to me sort of in the same vein as Dillinger escape plan is a uh, car bomb and their album meta which is incredible. It's, you know, they were on relapse for a while. I don't know if they're still together. I don't know anything about them. I didn't go look them up. I just remember how much I loved Car Bomb uh, a while back and seeing their name there. And now, now that I've been on that, um, that group for a while, you actually see Car Bomb a ton. But uh, seeing their name there, you know, under the good polyrhythms sort of post uh, made me listen to it, made me love it even more. Actually made me, I didn't put Dillinger on this, on this, but actually uh, made me start listening to uh, some of the newer Dillinger albums I, I've never given as much uh, time to. So that'll probably be on my next what I'm listening to. Anyway, th that's physical media, right? Because I wrote them down on a, on a card. Um, something else I do, I grabbed a few CDs. I try to listen to CDs in the car. Uh, because I have a CD player in my car and I have mostly CDs. I mean, if you're a, if you're a, a late 90s, 2000 kid, I had vinyl. I s took a lot from my dad because he was just going to waste it or sell it or lose it. Um, but I mean, a lot of that stuff just, it wasn't a vinyl time, right? So we had a lot of CDs. So, and I still buy them and I've been thinking about just going back the CD route with the exception of, of vinyl that I know for sure the band has mastered and cares about the vinyl. And because too often I've just bought I've just bought too many crappy pieces of vinyl to be honest and it's the uh the feeling of vinyl and you know the warmth of vinyl. I'm going to complain about vinyl a lot on these videos. Uh the warmth of vinyl only gets you so far when it's just literally dubbed over from the the master of a CD or a cassette or something like that or 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 not a lot of thoughts put into it. So Radiohead has screwed me. I own maybe three or four albums on on vinyl for Radiohead, and they're they're terrible. Uh, I mean the albums are great. I'm a huge Radiohead fan, but just as vinyl experience, not 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 great. And uh, another one that 
I sort of just bought into, I remember was uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vinyl from Primus. It's, I'm not, I don't even, I just thought of these so I don't have them show. But um, that was terrible and I got sort of roped into that because, I don't know, I think there were golden tickets inside. But it's really just nothing special. It's the cover, it's printed on it, it's cheap cardboard. Uh, the, al the actual music isn't that good. It's definitely not one of their best albums, that, without a doubt. And then it is just, you could tell it's just a dub over from the CD. It doesn't sound that bad like the Radiohead ones do, but it's just a waste. I may as well have either streamed it or bought it on CD or just watched them on their tour, which that whole album was great live because they had the whole live act with it that they'll never do again because they, they basically played the album in full. That was entertaining. The actual recorded side was terrible. Anyway, so one of the things I do on Discogs is I will um, just search for comps. And um, you know, especially when a seller has like three, four, five, because they're always cheap. So Invasion Records is not something I'm very familiar with. This is not, a, this is not one of those comps that affected me or that I, um, I loved as a kid. I'll be showing those two eventually. But what I, what I basically want to do with these is when I listen to them and I get to, you know, three or four in, I want that same experience I had in 1996 or whenever when comps were just coming out a bunch and that's the way you found music. There really, there was the internet, but most of us couldn't afford it. We didn't have it, you know, every now and then a Prodigy commercial would come on, not the band, the ISP. And you'd be like, oh, really? You can get sports scores? You know, I, I was a... Freshman in high school, so I'm not, you know, I'm in the middle of the old young um, as far as YouTubers go. And uh, I didn't even have an email then, so it was comps. It was all comps. Now, unfortunately, this one, while it wasn't bad, I've probably listened to it three or four times now over the last six months, and nothing sticks out. There, I think there was one band on here I liked. Their name was uh, Infest Dead, either Infest Dead or God Gory. And uh, in my mind, I think, hey, I'm going to go find that vinyl. It's probably cheap, cassette, CD or something. Probably cheap and, and a cool thing to add to my collection that has been lost in time. Um, that didn't happen with that one, though. <coughs> this band I had to go look up. Uh, I've owned this since this was released. This is a band called Bars. The name of the album is Introducing. In today's world, this would be a terrible name and terrible name for an album because it's ungoogleable. Uh, so I've owned this since like 2000, 2001. It's a sort of a, a stripped down post hardcore. That's pretty cool. They actually printed it on the case. So I can't break that case cause then I'll ruin it. And, um, otherwise, except for that little flare with the sticker on the front, it's a very stripped down hardcore, um, members of hope conspiracy and American nightmare, I think are in this. Uh, it was, it took me a long time to find like what was going on here. In fact, if I didn't know, if I didn't know it was Equal Vision, I probably wouldn't have found anything about them. Um, that led me to find out that they're actually still touring. They're actually still playing in places. Uh, I'm not in this scene at all. I mean, the name of the channel is not part of your scene, so I'm not in any scene, but uh, completely lost to them. But I have the CD and it's awesome. And I just really, really enjoy this. The name of the album is Introducing. I, I haven't found uh, any other albums. When you look up bars, like on Google Music, Apple Music, or whatever, I found a really good, I found this album, but I found a really good Catalan band, so from the Barcelona area in Spain, that play uh, country blues rock and, and sing in, in, uh, in, in that sort of version of Spanish. It's not Spanish at all, they'll come kill me if I call that, but sing in Catalan. And uh, they are really good too, and I've only listened to a little bit of them. So Bars, the stripped down early 2000s hardcore band, thumbs up, and Bars, the Catalan blues country Barcelona band, also thumbs up. These three albums, so at Punk Rock Bowling, Alternative Tentacles always has like this CD grab bag, <coughs> excuse me. In past years, there's actually been seven inches in it, but I could tell they were all CDs this time. And um, here were three hot, or here are three things I've listened to in it so far. Um, so I got this band. This is a band I didn't hear about. I didn't know. Uh, their name is Akimbo. I got to get used to the. I got to get used to the shine of CD cases while I'm doing these videos. 
the comics videos I just did. Oh, we're getting some auto, actually. Mm -hmm. Watch this move. Watch this move, guys. Bam. 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 Okay. So let's see if that... Uh... Anyway. Uh, this band that I'd never heard of, Alternative Chem uh, Tentacles, but have put on a few albums, uh, sounded, you know, from what I read, I picked the correct album. This, these guys are actually really good. It was definitely the best album in the grab bag of like five CDs for $5. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, whenever like a punk post-hardcore band also has a technical element uh, and good songwriting, it's a plus. So this is Akimbo, uh, Navigating the Bronze. It's, uh, it's definitely worth a stream at the very least if, um, if that world of hardcore, post-hardcore is your sound. The disappointing album uh, is the International Noise Conspiracy. This is a live album. It was done at the, at the Oslo Jazz Festival. And I'm on and off with the International Noise Conspiracy. Refused actually played punk rock bowling here in Vegas um, on Memorial Day weekend. And um, so seeing this was pretty cool. And I like uh, International Noise Conspiracy, but the problem with uh, putting, I forget the, I forget uh, our friend's name. Yeah, Der, uh, Dennis Live is that um, he preaches a lot. So he, in between every song, there's no cut. It's him speaking in Swedish too. So I can't even understand the, the leftist political uh, uh, monologues. So it gets a little bit too long between it, it, the band, since it's the jazz festival, they're not very jazz as an element in international noise conspiracy is good, but they seem to focus on those elements here and they're you know very mediocre at it. So uh, disappointment, even on the first listen, I was getting really bored with it, but I, I do like international noise conspiracy. I like refused a lot better, but I do like them. So the live album, not so good. Here's a band I didn't know anything about and still don't know about. I got in that grab bag. This band is called Lard. It's 70s Rock Must Die, Volcanus 2000, Wipe the World, and Ballad of Marshall Ledbetter. So it's essentially an EP, um, but it entertained me. Has that garage rock vibe. Um, to be honest, I like that sound, but I don't super respect a lot of those. I, I respect any band because I, I don't know how to play guitar at all. Um, but the fact is, if I got... Uh, album in a grab bag that does it pretty well of a band I never heard of than the vines whatever you know then it's you're probably more your success is probably more based on your marketing uh, which is important of course or your uh, uh, or your live show which I've heard the vines are very good the vines played punk rock bowling but I didn't go that day I only went one day I should I was supposed to do a whole video on what I did for punk rock bowling this year because I only went to the festival one day, but the rest of the days were awesome. And uh, this I was trying to get an old comp that I had lost and I wanted to re-add into my collection. And then to save in shipping, I had to just pick stuff from uh, uh, from the, the seller's sort of catalog. And this is one of the cheaper things that was there. This is Sparkle Horse, one of, uh, I forget the guy's name. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. It's one of his earlier albums. I have his first album somewhere in fact, hopefully it's not one that I lost. It was like, I discovered Sparkle Horse. I, I don't think they really got any big radio play, but I discovered them on one of those radio stations where they just got two unknown bands and, and put them up against each other and then people voted. So I remember like Poe, uh, that song, I Wanna Blow You Away before it was known, was it was either in LA, the LA or Fresno radio station, I can't remember where that was. And anyway, Sparkle Horse was one of those bands and uh, I ended up going and buying the first album with my little teenager money. And uh, everything I've heard since has always been pretty good from Sparkle Horse uh, from a, a perspective, you know, of maybe not the, if I'm like metalhead, hip hop, and then like punk and some indie, you know, as far as from a perspective from a guy that is, this is not his super favorite kind of music, but he enjoys it immensely. Um, my brother and I really liked the album from a couple years ago that uh, had a bunch of guest singers on it, which uh, I, I don't own physically, but it does have a lot of stream listens for me. And so I picked this up. This one's from 2007. I never heard of it before. And when I put it on, 
My uh, one, my 15 month old son uh, likes the easy going beats to it and dances to it. So this has become, in the very short time I owned it, a classic because I think that's really cute. And now the vinyl I've been listening to. <coughs> this is... I'll take this out, whoops. Um, this is not Shabazz Palace's best album, but it's what I've been listening to and it's still very good. This, I always forget the name of them. Wow. I guess I should be cooler and this is uh, Quasars versus the Jealous Machines. This was a, uh, uh, come on, come on. Having some uh, auto focus difficulties here, guys. But uh, this was a uh, Quasar and the Jealous Machines. A, uh, another one came out. Uh, Shabazz Palaces, every album's really good, but uh, as far as that like light, it's experimental hip hop. Um, the first album, Black Up, was the best. Lessie Majesty was second best, and it's sort of gone in order. Um, they've slowly been so-so uh, as they've released them. But everyone is good, though. I just like them in the order that they were released. So this is really good. Uh, just low, not lo-fi, but calm hip-hop. And uh, when you could be very experimental and not abrasive, that's a, that's a big deal. And Shabazz Palace is, succeeds at this immensely. This album was awesome. I need to really dig into the storyline in both of these albums that were released. But if you were just jumping in, I would, I would recommend to start with Black Up as their, their best one. This is a, um, the vinyl is, I'll show you the vinyl on that color because it, it is a cool red sort of splatter. So there you go there. Um, this next one I'm gonna show is a very basic punk band, but they've been playing, they don't exist anymore. This is The Vermin, it's called The Vermin Must Die. It's released on our local um, uh, record, punk rock record label, Squid Hat Records. Uh, these guys have been around a long time. The uh, lead singer here is, um, I guess he's on some tattoo TV show. His real job is a tattoo artist, like many bands. They play a real basic form of punk rock. Um, for the most part, I think they're called Dirk Vermin, but this album is, is their last album or some compilation. So um, it's called Dirk Vermin. But they've just been playing so long together live. They just sound so tight, and it's just... Really good sounding punk rock. I think I saw them uh, open up for the US Bombs. I think it was the US Bombs. And, and whoever they opened up for, um, the US Bombs were especially drunk and shit-faced and terrible. And they were especially tight, clean, and, and sounded great in a place called the Dive Bar. I think it was the US Bombs. And uh, it was just a huge contrast because they would have sound tight and amazing either way and probably beat out the uh, the headliner, but and then U.S. Bombs would have sounded terrible and been the worst on 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 the bill, and uh, just look stupid. But seeing just that contrast, I've never seen that far of a contrast that an opening band can be so much better than the known band. And then last but not least, uh, I've been listening to Warmones. I listen to this album a lot. In fact, uh, this is uh, I forget what's his name. I forget his name, but. They're more famous for Caved In, although Mutoid Man seems to have been getting the more recent fame. I can't remember if this is on a cool colored vinyl. Nope, it's just the black vinyl. Um, I love Mutoid Man. I love their art style. Uh, I love everything they've released. And I love Cave In too. That new album I didn't like too much. But um, Mutoid Man really just comes together. Ben uh, Queller from Converge is the drummer on it. And the, to tell you the truth, the songs are so catchy, sometimes you need to sit away from them for a little bit. And then when you put them back on, you're just, you're just rocking out, like doing air guitar and stuff to it too. So if you haven't heard Mutoid Man, or um, you're under the impression that you don't like them, you're wrong. And uh, you should check out Mutoid Man because they are an incredible time. I'd say um, rock guys that know their metal. That's, that's how I would describe Mutoid Man. Uh, just melodic rock guys that don't deny their metal influences. Anyway, that's all I got. Video went really long. Uh, I don't plan to do those long videos. I hope to do reviews and stuff and 
talk about music and music news, but that's just what I've been listening to over the last week or two. So let me know what you think. You listen to these bands. Um, do all of that stuff. You guys have a great day. Find me at Chris Sarda on Twitter.